wide. I don't think you'll need it, but um, when we see him coming out there, we will round up if you happen to be talking. Cheers. Right, let's do this. Listeners, probably not from NLTV yet, but certainly to BBC Surrey Online. If you found the link and you've got fellow shot supporters or forest green supporters, if that you're that way inclined, that haven't found it, please share it with them. I'm at the point now where I can't share with anybody else. I'm going to have to crack on. A warm welcome to the EBB Stadium. Uh, 10th of August should really be a hot, balmy day. And we should be talking about the concern for the players in the heat. But we're not going to because it's around about 20, 21 degrees. There's a lovely breeze in the air. The pitch looks lovely. It's being watered as we speak. And we're about to welcome in the new National League season. And we're going to do so here at the EBB with myself, Rob Worrell, and he's back. He pleaded with me, got down on his knees, said, please, Rob, one more season. <laughs> and I said, oh, go on then, Mr. Steve Gibbs. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's great to be back. As you said a couple of minutes ago, people might have heard, if you're not excited on the first game of the season, when are you excited? You're probably not alive. You're probably not a football fan. And... If you're not, then you're missing out on so much. And, <laughs> yeah, it's great to be back. And I think cautious optimism, quiet confidence, slipping under the radar. I think that's probably been all the shut towns summer and how they begin the season. But excited to see this new team that Tommy has built. Or is building, if you... Indeed. If, if you listen to... It's always a work in progress. Absolutely. Just out a couple of hours ago, listeners, you may have heard, if you joined us early, um, a chat with one of the hosts of the Shots Pod, which has put out on social media this morning. I think it was only come out about uh, 11, 12 o'clock, but it's um, the first pod of the season for them, and it's an exclusive with Tommy Widrington, who gives quite an insight to a, a number of things, including players that have come in, that have gone, and that are still in the wilderness, and might turn up again Steve <laughs> yeah ab absolutely and certainly yeah, we wish those individual players well wherever their career takes them if the, if that happens to be back at the Ebb Stadium then and if Tommy feels there they can add something to the squad add some quality some depth versatility whatever then absolutely because I think th those players whether on loan whether more long standing members of the team like Ryan Glover Haji Monoga then absolutely they on their day they're assets to this club but yeah I think individually you hope you wish them well wherever they move but certainly if that can dovetail with Aldershot Town success then everyone's a winner so Aldershot Town who finished 8th last season appointed a place outside the playoffs at home to Forest Green who finished 24th in League 2 last season which completed back-to-back -back relegations after all of the upward mobility of that football club over a number of years. It won't be the biggest shock in the world to them to be back in the National League, a bit like Sutton who've come down, Steve. They've both been here before. Um, Aldershot are currently the longest-serving team in the National League. Prior to that, it was Wrexham, and I think prior to that, it was Forest Green. Yeah, I think you look at... You think Aldershot Town's recent history has been a bit of a roller coaster. Forest Green had five consecutive seasons either as playoffs, challengers or actually winning promotion they rose to League One and four of their starting 11 this afternoon played in League One in that green shirt now that may be a strength that may be a psychological weakness, you don't know now they've suffered back-to-back -back relegations to drop back into the National League so over at the New Lawn it's never dull we always, we always think that Aldershot Town is a bit of a a roller coaster you never know what's going to happen day to day but five consecutive seasons in the playoffs or promotion and then your back to back relegations that's proper turmoil proper turbulence and they've had problems off the field as well you hope for them they find a bit of stability they do seem to have recruited well as you said earlier I think maybe quality over quantity and I'm perhaps surprised to see 
the likes of Liam Serkham and Tom Knowles not making the starting 11 this afternoon they're both on the bench but perhaps that is testament to the quality of the squad that Steve Cotterill has brought and Cotterill himself he's got great experience he's won promotion from the National League he's won the FA Trophy so I think when he was promoted by Forest, uh, appointed by Forest Green in January I think they knew what they were doing that maybe relegation was a strong possibility so they thought well if we stay up we've got a good League 2 manager if we go down we've got someone who knows the National League as well and I think he's someone who won't take any nonsense who will demand high standards from his players and and I think Forest Green maybe they won't quite go back up immediately maybe they're not quite the second favourites the favourites that most of the bookmakers seem seem to have them as but they're going to be quite strong I think it may take them a while to knit this this new squad together and get used to new surroundings and to maybe even lift those four players I think there's another player in the squad as well who's not starting today who played in League One you wonder what that's going to do to you professionally you think well we were good enough for League One and now we're back in the National League after barely the blink of an eye what will that do to them but it'll be an interesting game this afternoon a tough game for both sides in Christian Deutsch Forest Green have, re have brought back a, a striker who knows this level who is dangerous who is the wily fox in the box who always seems to find space even where other players are feeling cramped with a good leap and Ben Tozer yeah. in, the, in the squad as well with a dangerous long throw absolutely absolutely and I was wondering whether I might arrive here at the Ebb Stadium this, this afternoon and find that some advertising hoardings had been, had been put out that might restrict Ben Tozer but uh, they're not so I guess a lot of the training this week has been about not conceding throws in the uh, in the, the, the second half uh, in the, the old shot town half of the pitch sorry we've both been distracted by the uh, uh, the elegant features of Mr Matt Gray who's come to take in the game this afternoon um, he's just walked past Rob and of course we wish Matt well for the future as well wherever his career takes him but certainly I was wondering whether we might see some strategically placed advertising boards to hamper Ben Tozer that's not the case I guess the training this week has been don't concede throw-ins in your own half yeah or avoid them all costs absolutely um, a few of you listeners may well have listened in last week we did a practice commentary for the uh, season against Bromley and we talked quite a bit me and Steve then about some of the new Aldershot Town players but I appreciate a lot of you won't have heard that so just to fill in the blanks on the shot squad at the moment they have a 27 man squad and uh, that's there's only three sides in the league with a bigger squad than that but Tommy has been quoted this very day as saying that one or two more may still come in I think there's also an expectation one or two more might go out on loan but basically Steve he's kept 17 players from last season which is way higher than in any recent time and bought in 10 new players yeah, I think continuity has been something that Old Shot Town have been have been trying to develop over several years through quality player movement, through finances they've not been able to. So I think retaining the nucleus of a developing squad, a burgeoning squad, one that got really close to achieving something last year. And then it, we all know discipline was a key element last year. And if Aldershot Town do lose some key players to disciplinary reasons, then you do want somebody as close to a like-for-like -like replacement able to step in. And if Aldershot Town do want a challenge for promotion, if they do want to make that holy grail trip to Wembley in the FA Trophy as well and be competing for, for success in come March, April time, then they're going to need a big squad. Absolutely, that's Steve Gibbs. I'm Rob Worrell. We're five minutes away from the big kickoff to the National League season 2024 25. A packed East Bank awaits. Plenty of flags flying and plenty more at the back of the stand. Well done, Scotty Lorimer and uh, the Red Blue Army. Always. Um, and that's it. We wait now with bated breath and appropriately the sun bursts through the clouds at five to three alive and kicking 
comes over the PA system. And I didn't know this was going to happen, listeners, but look, Steve, all my hairs <laughs> stood on end. So I must be excited. And uh, why shouldn't we be? Because all we've had since Tommy Widrington walked through that door is entertainment. We've not always had the results we've wanted, but we can only hope that that entertainment continues under his tenure or tenureship. And I think we're, with a crowd here, upwards of two and a half thousand, maybe creeping towards the three. Yeah, I think it, it looks good. The East Bank looks looks healthily, healthily populated. Forest Green have brought uh, a decent contingent. Um, over half the seats filled in the south stand and a, a healthy contingent as well in the open area between the south stand and the east bank allowing for the usual August holidays maybe a couple of people that remain to be convinced of of the respective qualities of squads and whatever but no it's looking like a, a, a really positive occasion and absolutely the entertainment I think hopefully will be a given maybe Aldershot Town will concede a few a few less and score a few less but I would hope that the approach will still be the same OK that's Steve Gibbs former media manager at Aldershot Town I'm Rob Worrell and we're waiting now for the teams to come out here at uh, the EBB Aldershot Town against Forest Green if you're listening to Forest Green Persuasion welcome please also be aware there is a BBC Gloucester commentary available Welcome to a new season of the National League. Welcome to our BBC Surrey online listeners and welcome to our NLTV viewers. I'm Rob Worrell, alongside me is Steve Gibbs, the former Aldershot Town media manager. And the teams are out here at the EBB. Tremendous display of flags, red and blue from the Shots fans and a really good healthy turnout of the Forest Green supporters as well over on the far side in the final section of the south stand and the open slab which is in a little bit of shade there at the moment the shots will line up as follows Marcus Dewhurst in goal Ollie Harfield skipper in the side Christian Maghoma and Luke Jenkins the centre backs Ryan Jones and Tyler Frost the wing backs Cameron Hargreaves and Theo Widrington in the centre of midfield with Kai Corbett, Josh Barrett and Hadi Gandur ahead of them. Forest Green line up as follows. Jed Ward in goal. A back three as well, we believe. Ryan Innes, Ben Tozer and Jamie Robson. Sean Long and Marcel Lavinier uh, are their full backs, uh, wing backs, I beg your pardon. Uh, Manny Osadebe, Charlie McCann and Adam May, a former shots low knee in the centre of midfield with Kyle McAllister supporting Christian Deutsch in attack. Our referee this afternoon is Scott Simpson. And last year he was refereeing at EFL level. Most of his games in League 1 and League 2. 26 of them, 122 yellow cards. So an average of around about five just under cards, yellow cards again. But 10 red cards although eight of them were double yellows what do you make of that Steve Gibbs um, and for a referee in this day and age where there's a shortage of referees to actually be demoted or step down um, it's rather worrying it is yeah it is strange we looked at his stats before before going on air and the ten yellow cards last last year eight of them I think you said were second yellows which for me that might be a positive that he's actually a strong referee who enforces things like rugby tackles at set pieces that don't often get uh, get noticed or punished in by other referees but yeah the fact that he's been demoted is hopefully doesn't mean that that he's on his way down rather rapidly and that that it will be a substandard performance this afternoon He played a phenomenal voluntary role for both clubs over a 50-year period to 
It's for the Reverend Mike Pusey, an announcement from Graham Brooklyn, which you may have heard. 90th birthday, had a bit, had a few health issues of late as well. His pictures on the uh, screen at the high street end of the EBB, and rather unusually, I don't think it was meant to be that way, but. The announcement's going on at the same time as the applause, so we doff our cap to that very man. Happy 90th birthday to the Reverend Mike Pusey, the yeah. club chaplain, or I think maybe the former club chaplain now. Former now, but yeah. I don't I don't know if there's anybody at this club at the moment who has given more of their life in service to his faith and to this football club as Mike Pusey. A wonderful man. Wish him well for his health. Wish him well for a fabulous 90th birthday. And long may he continue to be able to support our club all right the scene is set here at the EBB for the new National League season we welcome Forest Green whether they like it or not back to the National League will they be one of the very few sides ever to bounce straight back up to the EFL well we'll see but they have kickoff they're kicking towards the East Bank end in the first half and uh, a couple of swings and misses already one notably there from Christian Maghoma at the back determined to make his mark early and a very rare complete and utter air shot thankfully Luke Jenkins was uh, was uh, backing him up from behind the, the forest green in uh, a green kit from top to bottom with kind of black flashes diagonally across it a ball forward from bent over Toza now who's wearing the captain's armband and uh, it's chased down by the forest green number 17 uh, Jamie Robson who we were told was originally playing as a right centre back then we found out he's the right wing back now we know he's the left wing back who's the player who's come in to replace Marcel Lavinia who was originally named on the team sheet Steve yeah Robson is the left Maybe wing back yeah We'll yeah. come back Is to it, you on that, shall we? Yeah, I think we should. Because I think the wing-backs are Robson and Long. Maybe they've switched sides. Because yeah. Robson is definitely on the left. We'll see who. We'll try and work out who that right wing-back is. I think it's Jamie Robson. Um, uh, no, it is Sean Long. Look, he's going to jump and head it now. Long at right wing-back and Robson at left wing-back. OK. Here's Forrest Green giving the ball away. Kai Corbett wins it back. Cameron Hargreaves feeds Luke Jenkins. Little ball down the right channel. Gandua will compete for it. Oh, <laughs> he nipped in between Toza and the keeper Jed Ward, who's making his debut, by the way. And Jed Ward briefly dropped the ball. Thankfully for him and for Forrest Green, uh, he was towards the edge of his area. There was no shots player near him. But some early nerves on display at both ends of the pitch. Steve yeah, Gibbs. and I, I don't want to bring this up because I think uh, I think I made quite a lot of it when. Uh, uh, Mr Ward played for Wealdstone at the Ebb Stadium last season he dropped a Ryan Glover cross into his own net to give Aldershot the lead I believe uh, and prior to that he'd been beaten at long distance uh, almost been beaten at long distance from by Michael Cheek um, and somebody else as well in the National League around that time I would hope think that Aldershot Town will remember that be aware of that and we'll start putting some crosses, some high balls, shooting from long range, seeing if Jed Ward's handling has improved. OK, that's Steve Gibbs. I'm Rob Worrell. Here's Theo Widrington bursting forward straight through the middle, sends it out to the left side, finds Ryan Jones. Jones to Josh Barrett, who just turns, comes back to half-field, and Aldershot happy to keep possession there. Almost three minutes in, nil-nil. Maghoma switches it across to Luke Jenkins. Uh, he was... Uh, one of the National League South players of the year last year for Chelmsford and Tommy Widgerton pitched in for him quite early there was a lot of interest in him 
Uh, once he knew that Kean Harry's had intention to move on, as he has done to Woking. And we'll keep an eye on the other games, of course, in the National League this afternoon as well, which have all kicked off as well at three o'clock. Um, and we'll wait to see who will get the first goal in the National League. Maghoma goes back to Dewhurst, who plays it short to Jenkins. Jenkins to Frost. Frost to Hargreaves. A little bit of a heavy coming together there. Um, and the referee... Scott Simpson does give all the shot down the free kick, which is interesting because for me that was the kind of challenge that a lot of refs have been letting go, Steve. Yeah, I think I think so. It was strong between McCann and Hargreaves, two fully committed players. We've already seen what Cam Hargreaves is all about. 100% commitment, boundless energy, and I think his influence on the midfield against I think what I, I think is a good quality central midfield, versatile midfield for Forest Green this afternoon. I think him and Theo will have their work cut out to try and. Uh, stifle the the three players in the midfield for Forest Green. Aldershot are finding it quite hard to break through the final line of the Forest Green defence which out of possession is a clear five straight across yeah. Yeah. the back the two wing backs sitting deep. Jenkins tries to lift the ball over again headed away by Tozer. One in the air by Frost but he can only head that ball to Adam May one of the more recognisable Forest Green players in the centre of midfield. He's uh, joined following the end of his contract at Cambridge United and of course he has been here at uh, Aldershot Town on loan previously and impressed scored a few goals when he was here as well a double in one game I remember there's a ball forward headed on inadvertently I think by the diminutive number seven Carl McAllister and just goes all the way through to Marcus Dewhurst out to the left Ryan Jones plays the ball inside to Josh Barrett and he's taken out, he wins a free kick. Referee has a word with number five, Ryan Innes, who's up from the back. <laughs> Harvey Bunker, by the way, is the uh, additional centre-back that's, that's come into the team, the number 16. So uh, Bunker, Innes and Tozer, the back three. Shots are giving it away again a little bit too easily. And Bunker plays the ball. He's the left-sided of the three. Tozer in the middle, Innes on the right. Uh, May perhaps the deepest of the three central midfielders now Osadebi goes down but Forest Green keep the ball and the ball is picked up now by the another diminutive player number eight Charlie McCann he's quickly shut down by Hargreaves and both sides looking to keep good ball in the early period of the game there is a Forest Green player down and still down over on the far side and I think it's Osadebi or Osadebe, or however you... I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. To check with the uh, Forest Green guys. Yeah, I'd go with Osadebe. Yep. He, um, he went down. He's now sitting up. Six minutes gone. Nil, nil here. Uh, good afternoon to all our listeners around... Uh, lo li listening locally, listening around the country or around the world. One of those is Mike Hudson, who's listening in from Chicago. Hopefully by now John Bell's listening in from Germany. The link wouldn't work for him. Um, a while back and now um, what, the ref what the crowd not happy about Steve I think the fact the referee has uh, given the ball straight back to Jed Ward for the restart after Oscar Davey uh, is back up from his injury when I think the ball was more in the centre circle look with, in Aldershot Town's possession when the game was stopped yeah that's Jed Ward by the way not Jed Ward in goal Aldershot have won it, Hadi Gandor into the area, shoots, goal! And we said he might do it, and he has! Not a single goal in pre-season for Hadi Gandor! But he runs to the bench, he celebrates with the players and the manager who backed him, who put him in the starting lineup, and he scored Hadi Gandor in the seventh minute. It is Aldershot Town 1. Forest Green, nil. Steve Gibbs. From nothing, a chance. And Hadi Gandor re did really well. One touch to get it out from under his feet. Open up the angle. And then he fired it really confidently, precisely. Through the hands of Jed Ward, over Jed Ward, into the net. That's the sort of confident finish that Hadi Gandor needed. He needed a goal. He'd done everything but score in pre-season. Superb for him and superb for Aldershot Town. Scoring after seven minutes of the season has got to augur well. And hopefully that will give Aldershot Town the confidence they need to go on and get a result this afternoon.
they say pre-season doesn't matter and right now Hadi Gandor will believe that because I think we all noticed his work rate his mobility his runs off the ball and unfortunately we noticed him not putting the ball in the net a number of occasions he was unlucky he did hit the woodwork on a couple of occasions well Forest Green have been welcomed back to the National League and Gandu has pressed and won it again he's into the right hand side of the area cross in looking for Barrett can Barrett keep it in yes by the byline just does so comes back um, he's still going backwards now he turns and goes the other way what a start from Gandu tries a back heel Barrett Oh, Ryan Jones has won it. He's trying to get his cross in and it's plucked out of the air by Jed Ward who has conceded seven minutes into his debut for Forest Green. And for all their efforts to wipe the slate clean and, and, and start afresh Forest Green for the 14 players in their squad that suffered relegation last season, it'll be an all too familiar feeling. Steve, and, and before I come to you on that yeah. point, let me point out that Mr. Haji Monoga is in the crowd watching with his young child away to our right. He is That's indeed. nice to see. It is. It is. Uh, his <laughs> Jenkins winning the ball in the air. That comes back from McCann. Now, Aldershot win the ball with Corbett. Comes off it. Oh, no. It's been kept in. And uh, Robson plays it inside. And it's non-stop. We can't discuss too much because it's out to the right hand side Forest Green have still got it nice for early touch to Osadibi who's uh, okay and then he plays it forward and that surely is too strong and it is and it goes through to Marcus Dewhurst and I had about seven points in my mind Steve but uh, just the <laughs> excitement of the start of the season and a goal early on here at the EBB point I was going to make last season Aldershot too often scored and then conceded again rather too quickly um, but there's such high adrenaline here at the moment as the goalkeeper was a long way out of his uh, area and if anything it's all who are pushing and pressing for a second and that's not a bad tactic is it because no all too often last year goals scored were followed rather too quickly by ones conceded they were absolutely yeah and you've got to you've got to make hay while the sun shines while you're on top take as much advantage of as you can and forest green do look a little bit a little bit wary maybe a little bit slack in possession at the back and certainly if the shots can exploit that with the already the tireless running of Hadi Gandor I think I compared him last weekend to Danny Hilton and he has got that harem scarum chase all day attitude free kick to Forest Green over on the far side um, level with the right hand edge of the penalty and a yellow card already shown to Ryan Jones is it Steve? it looks like Ryan Jones and I think entirely deserved I think uh, uh, whoever the first green player was was getting past him was past him and James knew exactly what he was doing in grabbing a fistful of shirt OK we had a few early goals in the National League Filed are beating Solihull Moors 1-0 Gates had a beating excuse me this is Ebbsfleet 1-0 Maidenhead a 1-0 up against Eastleigh Oldham 1-0 up against Braintree and uh, yeah it's five home sides that have scored uh, in the opening 10-11 minutes or so in the National League where you rarely find a nil-nil <laughs> and you don't get many clean sheets either a clean sheet from here on in an order shot town will have three points in the bag but that is most definitely going a little bit early free kick dangerous territory for Forest Green over on the right hand side um, about 15 yards outside the penalty area in it comes now headed down by Tozer, away by Widrington, back in from Osadebi, one in the air by Widrington, Frost turns it inside and finds Cameron Hargreave, Hargreave up to Gandur, holds it up, goes back to Hargreaves, Aldershot keep possession, under a bit of a press from Forest Green, and then Jenkins changes the direction, and they're pinging it about with a little bit of confidence, Maghoma's Pressed too hard and has to go back to Dewhurst who clears his lines. Forrest Green win the header but can only find Cameron Hargreaves. Barrett picks up a loose ball. Sees Gandor on the left. Takes it nicely in his strike. Can he get it onto his right foot? Try to chip finish! What a finish! What a finish from Hadi Gandor! 13 minutes in! And a dream start for Gandor! 
A dream start for Odershot Town. He's foraging in the left-hand side of the penalty here and all of a sudden he just tries a clipped right-footed finish from the outside of his foot. He lobs Jed Ward. He hits the back of the net and with just 13 minutes gone, it's Aldershot Town 2, Forest Green 0. Wow. Wow. Goal of the season contender after 12 minutes. I'm not ruling it out. Excellent play from Josh Barrett. Driving through midfield, played exactly the right pass. Gandor had it, then he didn't quite have it, and then he had it again. He had options. He looked up. I thought, well, he's made a mess of that cross. And then suddenly it became a delicious lob from the tightest of angles over Ward, underneath the crossbar, nestling into the far corner. And suddenly it's an incredible goal. This is, this is horribly unkind, and I apologise to him. I think there are two Hadi Gandors. The one that played in pre-season and struggled for goals, maybe looked a little bit out of his depth. And the Hadi Gandor that has started this afternoon started absolutely on fire. Forrest Green cannot cope with him. Well, I'm going to slightly disagree. I think he's been this mobile, this hungry. Um, pressing... Br Ooh, that's a poor tackle there from Theo Widrington. And he might get straight red here. The referee has gone for yellow. And I think he's done Theo Widrington a massive favour. He slid in. Foot was on the ground, but studs were up. He missed the ball. He caught the man. And a brilliant, brilliant start from Aldershot. Could have gone very sour there, Steve Gibbs. It could. And I think... You're absolutely right. I think another referee would have shown red. I think that's the the bad side of Theo Widrington that he needs to stamp out and stamp out now. Because for all of the quality that he showed at the end of last season, he does still have that rash challenge, that lack of discipline, that looseness to fall off the pace of the game. And his dad needs to get hold of him and just eradicate any element of that Otherwise, he becomes a liability. Free kick into the box. Downward header. Cleared. Only as far as McCann tries a shot come across. That's off target. Bounces towards the empty section of the East Bank because Forest Green supporters are on the slab and in the south stand. And, uh, wow, listeners, if you've joined us late, you've missed a blistering start from Aldershot Town. A blistering start from Hadi Gandor, who could not buy a goal in pre-season. In our opening chat here in the 15 minutes before the game, we teed it up. We said he hasn't managed one all pre-season. Might he get his first goal today? Thank you very much, Hadi Gandor. Seven minutes and 13 minutes. Two goals. Both of them quite brilliantly finished. But Steve, uh, away to my right, has already quite rightly said, even as the other 40 five and three quarter games go on that's going to be in the mix for goal of season it will and yes you're absolutely right Hadi has had the mobility the energy the impetus whatever but he's not had the end product he doesn't he's not quite been running around like a headless chicken but there seems to have been a not quite up to speed with the game not quite on the same wavelength as his teammates but now in the opening 15 minutes of this of the season do Aldershot Town need another striker? I mean, yes, I think they do, but Hadi Gandor at the moment has got the shirt and he's grasped it with both hands. He's going to metaphorically and literally banging on the gaffer's door going, who else do you need, boss? I can score goals like that. Well, bear in mind there's not another game in the National League currently going on with more than one goal in it. Hadi Gandor, I can confidently say, is the top scorer in the National League as it stands. Um, there has now been an away goal scored, and that's by Rochdale at Boston. Ball through the middle, looking for Gandor. He might have a chance here, surely. Ball inside. Corbett squares it. Barrett. Oh, it hits the foot of the post. Tremendously unselfish play from Gandor and then Kai Corbett. And Josh Barrett, the nearly man, as I've been calling him lately, hits the post. Here's Corbett with a shot. That cannon's off a Forest Green defender. It's trickling towards the corner, the goal line. Kept in by Frost, but it comes off him for a throw-in. 18 minutes very nearly gone. Two nil shots, could be three, but for the width of a post. And Josh Barrett, who's been so frustrated in front of goal in uh, pre-season, can't believe it's happened again. Yeah, all shot are rampant. 
Forest Green don't know what has hit them. Also at town, they look like they're going to score every time they go forward. And that is credit to, individually and collectively, the forward play, the discipline of the midfield, and the, the, the movement, the quality, the vibrancy of Gandor, Barrett and Corbett. At the moment, Forest Green don't know what's hit them. We don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't know what's hit us. What we what's hit us, listeners, is the start of the new National League season. We're expecting a roller coaster. The end of my interview with Tommy Widrington last week, which I don't think has gone out yet on the BBC. We talked a lot about Hadi Gandor, and um, I'm going to have to use a different word to what Tommy did, but. I said he's been so lively in pre-season, but he just can't buy a goal. Tommy said he's been flying in training, and uh, I don't know what he's done, run over a black cat or something. We may have to get an exorcist in <coughs> to do something in all four corners of the ground, and uh, maybe they did it in the weeks, Steve. It's worked. Whatever they've tried, it's worked, yeah. And that's an, that's an experienced Forest Green defence. The likes of Ben Toza and Ryan Innes... Adi Gandor at the moment is making them look like like amateurs free kick to order shot in their own half Luke Jenkins fouled so far so good Steve we yeah, are let's not be carried away just yet well 20 minutes gone I can say we've talked obviously about Adi Gandor and about the goals but first look at the new shots defence obviously they they do have a clean sheet 20 minutes in but uh, initial thoughts on uh, Jewhurst and the back three which is I think um, Tommy Whittington's preferred I don't think there's any you know there, it's not no. to to bring anybody in to cover anybody at this stage no no I would agree I think Lockie Bird is at the moment the, the fourth choice centre back and uh, who will be an able deputy when called upon this season but at the moment they look like a good partnership and obviously they've got lots of quality as Jenkins gives one away there's a foul by Luke Jenkins. I think he's going to get yellow as well. And there we go. He tried to do a one-touch back pass. Didn't get any any kind of purchase on it. Knew it wasn't going to meet its man. So he grabbed hold of the shirt of the Forest Green player. And I have to say, referee has shown three yellows. All the shots players. And every single one of them um, deserved. I didn't get clear blue of Ryan Jones. But your opinion on that was it was uh, unequivocal. Yeah, I think absolutely, yeah. He'd been beaten. He was left standing. And the only thing, there were two things going to happen. Either Forest Green, Forest Green were going to advance on a post into the old shot penalty area, or Jones was going to grab a fistful of shirt and probably a bit of midriff as well in stopping the player from breaking forwards. Here's the quickly taken free kick from Forest Green, headed away by Theo Widrington, headed on by Ryan Jones, but he can only find Osa Debbie. Osa Debbie is. Uh, found Adam May ball forward taken down edge of the area Harfield should get there first does and he doesn't concede the corner but his clearance only finds Long Long back cross comes in missed by a couple of people hooked into the net and Forest Green have got one back through the number five Ryan Innes and all the shot down with a perfect start 2-0 up inside the first 13 minutes well here we are back at the EBB no clean sheet Forest Green have pulled one back shots two for a screen one excellent hook finish from Innes as well he had to improvise the ball dropped to him at, with barely a split seconds notice and he controlled that one could so easily particularly as a centre back could so easily have launched that onto the roof of the East Bank but he controlled it really well before that though pretty shoddy shots defending Ollie Harfield did well to keep it in and effect some sort of a clearance in one, one movement but thereafter all shot down really were left watching could have done something about it the ball dropped should have been cleared Innes should have been picked up he wasn't and now Forest Green are back in this game yeah shots two Forest Green won just about halfway through the first half EBB saw the second most goals per game in the National League last year the only ground there was more scored was Chesterfield they were the champions they romped it didn't they here's shots coming down the right with Frost tries an early cross that's blocked uh, by Long I think it is he may have switched sides now and uh, into touch so early excitement here two terrific goals from Hadi Gandor and now the shots just have to remind themselves where they are and just settle again because they've been pulled back Maghoma plays it forward 
Gandor will jump with May. No foul given. Headed into touch by Ben Tozer, who last came here with Wrexham, uh, where they beat uh, Aldershot home and away in that final season in League Two. Shots have got a throw, taken quickly from Frost to Corbett. Corbett to Widrington. Widrington back out to Frost. Exchanges passes with the same player again. And uh, Frost eventually goes all the way back to Maghomer, who sweeps it out to Ollie Harfield. Tough one this on Ollie because he did well to keep it in, but he could have just conceded a corner and he tried to keep possession, but he only fed it to the Forest Green player. The next pass went in. His Christian Doidge going through the middle and Luke Jenkins does really, really well. And I shouldn't really applaud because I'm commentating, but I felt the need to. First real yeah. test there. And all the shots, two goal lead could have been wiped out. Oh, Gandor could be in again. No, the ball continues through to Jed Ward, who makes a huge clearance forward. And uh, Maghoma can head it back to uh, Dewhurst. And, uh, well, such is the frenetic nature of the game. Keep trying to have conversations with you and uh, we can't get in. There's too much football getting in the way, Steve. Absolutely. He, he cares. He needs to talk to me. But, yeah, I think excellent defending from Luke Jenkins there. Up against the wily experience. The nous of Christian Deutsch. Knows exactly what he's doing through on goal. But Jenkins just did enough to ease him off the ball and allow Dewhurst to make the clearance could so easily have risked conceding a penalty but no he did really well ok warning shots though for the shots here's Theo Widdington bursting through the middle again would have probably been pulled back for a free kick but he managed to feed the ball out to Kai Corbett anyway shots playing with one of those box midfields that's too heavy from Barrett but it comes off the head of oh um, a forest green player spins viciously and Jed Ward comes to get it I think it is still that uh, box midfield. So you've got Widrington and Hargreaves centrally deeper and then uh, Barrett and Corbett in front of them and then Hadi Gandor playing as the out-and-out -out striker. And uh, as we've said many times already, if you've joined us late, missed every single chance he had in pre-season and has scored two out of two here. Um, now the National League's kicked off. Ball hooked forward by Dewhurst, half cleared. Referee doesn't spot an infringement. Harfield goes back to Dewhurst, who's conceded his first competitive goal for Aldershot Town. And well, Geordie Van Stappershoe, his teammate, will tell him it's a bit of a high premium keeping a clean sheet for Aldershot Town, isn't it? It, it was last is. year. And early indications are that it might be again. Here's Hargreaves badgering away at uh, Osadibi, who finds Robson on the left flank. Robson and Long have switched flanks again maybe they just temporarily had switched before out of possession um, Corbett needs to be careful grabbing the back of Osadebi's shirt Jenkins again cuts out a ball forward clips it forward but can only find the head of a Forest Green player then Frost wins his header um, Widrington goes in with Adam May the ball comes off of May I believe throwing to the shots what's going on elsewhere then Altrincham 1, Woking nil. Off the pitch, we've heard lots about Woking in pre-season. At least one of their joint owners has fled the nest. Uh, the other one's been left holding the baby, and uh, it's an expensive one by all accounts. Oldham 2, Braintree nil, And uh, Solihull Moors have equalised at Fylde. Here at the EBB, we've had three goals already, and it's Aldershot Town 2, Forest Green 1. Towering headed winner from Innes, the goal scorer. Comes back from Frost, headed away again by Toza. Jenkins gets up with Doidge, can't win it, comes off Doidge's head. I must admit, Hart was in the mouth there for a minute when Doidge went through. There's not many more accomplished finishes. And uh, thankfully for Aldershot, he hesitated, which allowed Jenkins to get in. Yeah, I think maybe there was a little bit of a hesitation as well, but nonetheless, excellent defending from Jenkins. Who's Again, having a bit of a fractious physical tussle with uh, with Doidge. He claimed the foul as he Doidge stood with his back to goal. And then as the pair fell over, I think Jenkins maybe felt that Doidge used his, uh, used his elbow somewhat too much to fashion a soft landing on the side of Jenkins' head. That's Steve Gibbs. Here's Barrett trying to find Gandor. On this occasion, it's cut out by Toza. Good afternoon to Steve Ray in the Isle of Wight. I think you've picked the wrong day to get that green mankini out. Um, 
because Forest Green are playing in exactly the colour of your mankini, Steve. So can you just keep it away in the draw and just do us all a favour? Shots have the ball. Hargreaves goes back to Dewhurst, who's quickly off his line to read a, a softly hit back pass from Cameron Hargreaves. Innes just steps in front of Gandor. He's a bit of a giant, is Innes. Um, he's big, strong, but mind you, he also took the ball down beautifully at the other end. Maghoma comes through a little bit heavy-handed on the Forest Green player. They take their free kick quickly. Referee wants it back. Meanwhile, Dewhurst did a brilliant header out of the area anyway, none of which would have counted. I do wonder if the referee hadn't shown a yellow yet in this game, whether he'd have shown yellow there for um, <coughs> Maghoma. Excuse me. Yeah, I think possibly it was it was rather overzealous, physical, a bit clumsy, ungainly, wasn't from it? From yeah. Christian, yeah, but perhaps. But then he does seem to be a referee that that doesn't take any nonsense. That will that is quite happy to wave his cards and deservedly so. I don't think anybody can have any complaints with the three that he has shown so far. And I think that one, if it had been, then might have been deserved. Here's Forrest Green coming down the right, ball inside. Shot from distance is brilliantly saved away to his left by Dewhurst. The shot came in from Charlie McCann, it was on target. Terrific save from Dewhurst. Ball comes in again, Magoma wins the header. And then all the shot half clear and Gandor will get onto it first. He has a heavy touch, can he keep it in? Plays it down the line, cut out by Osadebi. All right foot but manages to keep it in. Holds the ball up, goes back to McCann. Forest Green were being well outplayed, but with that goal to get them back in it, not only have they halved the deficit, Steve, but their own confidence levels have gone up. They've scored their first goal in the National League and they're within touch, aren't they? Definitely, yeah. It's a much more even game now. I think Forest Green started really shakily, very much second best in most areas, but now they're starting to ask all the shot town questions and show the undoubted quality that they have. Here come shots. They've pressed and won the ball back again with Corbett. Corbett to... Hadi Gandor, who tries some sort of forward pass that's cut out straight away by Toza. The shot's front three, not on the same wavelength there. Here's Osadebe picking the ball up again. Um, Forest Green come down the line, it brushes off Oli Harfield, goes into touch around the halfway mark. So, half an hour gone here, 30 minutes and 30 seconds as we speak. Aldershot Town to Forest Green 1. I was going to make the point at 1-0, and before we knew it, it was 2-0 and 2-1, that uh, a certain Mr. Widrington um, had to wait, I don't know, about 7, 8, 9, 10 home games last year to get a 1-0 win. He said he loves them, and he genuinely believes that when his side scores first, in his head, he's thinking, right, um, he'd like it done and dusted from there, clean sheet and a 1-0, but, um, <laughs> you know, you can, you can but dream, can't you? Exactly, yeah, we can all dream. We can all dream, Tommy, but I mean, I'm certainly not complaining. That is not going to happen. Aldershot Town, on the evidence of the opening 31 and a quarter minutes of this season, are as gloriously kamikaze as they were last year. And long may that continue. I am not complaining. Five new players in Aldershot starting 11 today. Six if you want to make an argument that Christian Maghoba barely set foot on a pitch for Aldershot last season. He's in the centre of the back three. Is Widrington sending the ball over the top, being chased by Gandor. He's done really well to get there. Take it down, pulls it back, deflects off of a Forest Green player. It's cleared away by Innes. Harfield's quickly forward to win it and finds Josh Barrett. Takes the ball down with his head. Flicks it back inside to Cameron Hargreaves. Shots may have a man over on this right side if they move it quick enough. Luke Jenkins has got it. He's pretty mobile. Gives it to Kai Corbett. Corbett to Frost. He's been very disciplined in the right wing back rail early on. Good ball from him to Widrington. Widrington uh, inside to Hargreaves. The little beaver just gets getting, getting it and giving it. Uh, keeping possession through Harfield to Jones. Now back to Hargreaves. He gives it back to Harfield. And Aldershot won't mind a little bit of this. On the edge of the final third, keeping the ball. Jenkins has come well forward now. Goes back to Frost. He's barely made room for a cross yet, Frost. Gives it to uh, Jenkins. Jenkins tries something that doesn't come off. And my initial thoughts on Jenkins, as, as Man Mag Homer plays it forward. It's one in the air by Bunker. Only going to go back to Har Harfield. Might have to wait for my thoughts on Jenkins. Um, here's Ryan Jones. 
into Barrett turns moving towards the edge of the penalty area he's inside the penalty area twisting and turning he's lost possession Long's got it Long plays it forward only as far as Harfield Harfield um, turns it inside to Hargreaves and Hargreaves across early to Luke Jenkins I think he wants to do a little bit more than just defend Jenkins and I think ooh, Frost's taken out there late by Bunker and Forest Green are going to get their first yellow card and we just have to hope that Tyler Frost's groin wasn't opened up too badly there. I think, in fairness to him, he's learnt that you sometimes have to accelerate the contact a bit. I don't like it, but that's what he did. Mm. Bunker's shown the yellow and Frost is straight up. Four yellows in the game, three of them to shots players. Jones, Jenkins and Widrington in the book already. Now joined by Harvey Bunker. Yeah, I think uh, maybe that one was the, the, the less obvious of the four, but... I still think Bunker had got done a little bit by Frost and uh, got there as quick as he could but was always going to be late. OK, Jones, Ryan Jones on his Aldershot Town competitive debut and Josh Barrett has stood over this free kick. Barrett fakes to go short, waits and they go at the second attempt. Left foot comes in, headed away by the Forest Green defender, hooked forward by McCann. Harfield all alone. He should be able to head it back to Dewhurst and does. Dewhurst puts the ball down. Comes well out of his box. Considers his options. And then plays it short to Tyler Frost. 35 minutes very nearly gone. Frost down the middle. Gandor's working. Keeper comes out of his area. Chests it down and then hooks it forward. Jed Ward. Uh, offside given against Forest Green. And uh, quick estimate of the Forest Green fans. I'm going to say a good couple of hundred, Steve. Yeah, at least. I would have said two, 250. 250 maybe, yeah. Uh, decent crowd in. Oh, lovely slight touch from Gandor. Gets him away from Toza down the right side. Pulls it back. Corbett sweeps it in early, but can only sweep it straight to Adam May. Uh, good win from Cameron Hargreaves. Theo Widrington wins it back. Ball into Corbett. Corbett, clip ball over the top. Looking for Barrett. Oh, tries his shot. It's blocked by Jed Ward and uh, Aldershot have won it back and then they're offside but Mr Widrington you might have to get your ex-assist in for Josh Barrett as well lovely flicked ball over the top Barrett did well to get his shot away Steve, he did but he hit it straight at Jed Ward yeah I think uh, in the end it was a little bit too close range he couldn't get couldn't get the ball past Ward who was quick off his line but yeah when Aldershot Town click in, in attack they're delicious and they're irresistible. That Hadi Gandor is making Ben Toza look look like a 17-year-old first-timer rather than 30-something experienced player who's been there and seen it and done pretty much everything. He is, uh, well, the Forest Green, number 17, Jamie Robson, the wing-back, was battling away with Tyler Frost, but Frost didn't. He knew that if he could just keep in contact with him, the ball would run across them and out of touch for a throw been a very disciplined performance from Tyler Frost in the right wing back position so far I think Steve we've spoken to him enough times we know him well enough to know that he'd love to be getting a lot more forward than he is but it doesn't matter he's playing for the team he's doing what's required on the day and uh, Robson in that left wing back role for Forest Green is being quite brave at times and venturing quite a long way forward so oh there's a ball over the top Maghoma deals with it Harfield follows up, plays it forward. One in the air by Bunker. Widrington wins it back. Oh, Barrett chests it down, but straight to Osadibi. And uh, Osadibi comes across the line, but a heavy pass from Robson can only find Jenkins. Jenkins finds Theo Widrington, who goes back to Jenkins, and Jenkins goes back to Dewhurst. Dewhurst out of his area now goes long down the middle. Gandu is being held off by Bunker off the ball. Good win from Cameron Hargreaves. He's not the tallest, but uh, he got up really, really well there. You do see it, don't you, with the more diminutive players. They've always been told they're not good in the air, and they do that extra bit of leap. Ryan Glover yep. used to do it. Here's Kai Corbett coming forward. Oh, poor ball. Cut out um, well by Adam May. Josh Barrett working hard to try and win the ball back. One of the things Aldershot have worked on. When you lose possession, how quickly can you win it back? Here's Cameron Hargreaves trying to win it back off Osadibi. Um, is oh Corbett pressing and all shot I've nearly won it again I've just lost it and uh, Corbett a judge to have fouled 
the referee spotted it well. I'm going to say, it's interesting, we talked about how many yellows and reds and referee shows. He's shown four in this first half, at least three, maybe all four were deserved. Um, the, the number of yellow cards he's had to show aside, I do think the referee's had a pretty good first half. He's let a few things go. Yeah. He's done a little bit of staring at it when it's not much contact, but he's also given it when he's seen it clearly. Um, and he's done all right for me so far. No big decisions, really. I would agree. As yet. Um, but so far, so good. It's the referee's first game of the season as well, and the first in the National League, having been demoted from the Football League. It's AFC filed one, Sol Solihull Moors two, Jack Stevens. And it's Boston United nil, Rochdale two, Devante Rodney. It's Maidenhead nil, Eastley one, not one nil. So I think we gave up one nil earlier. That goal must have been disallowed. And it's Gateshead two, Ebbsfleet nil. And uh, Danny Searle is experiencing the, uh, the Gateshead effect. They are the real deal, there's no doubt. They've had a turnover of players, but they've got a way of playing, Steve, that is delicious and... Yeah, I don't think we can underestimate that fantastic 1-0 win Aldershot got up away at Gateshead midweek which as much as Aldershot not wanting to play the game the week before has riled Gateshead fans but we move on of course from that um, here's Harfield playing the ball down the line that will be taken on the chest of Ben Tozer he goes back to Bunker Bunker under pressure from Corbett goes back to Ward and we're in the 40th minute already Aldershot town to Forest Green 1 we know already, listeners, that we're going to be well entertained this season. Don't have any doubts about that. And if you had any doubts about Aldershot's ability to score goals this season, well, two in the first half not bad, Steve, is it? No, it's pretty good. Ball through, now, the, ball through the middle, headed down by Dewhurst. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, um, McAllister was very nearly through on goal there, but Dewhurst came off his line quickly, to, quickly and alertly to clear the danger. But certainly, Aldershot Town look a very potent attacking team. Ball in, well cut out by Jenkins. Finds Harfield. Harfield under pressure, kicks for touch. And he has been under quite a bit of pressure, Ollie Harfield, in, at times in this first half. I'm not sure if some elements of that are that Ryan Jones maybe looks more comfortable going forward than defending to me. He's picked up a yellow card already, as Ryan Glover found out last year. In that role, there's a lot of defensive work to do. And you've got to pick your moments to get forward. Ryan Glover did that superbly last year. Maidenhead nil, Eastley two. Long ball into the box. Punched away by Dewhurst. I think the first time the Shots fans this year have said, catch it. I mean, he was totally unmarked, but he made a very early decision to punch away. And he did clear his area. Yeah, I, th I, think, it, I think it was probably swirling. It was, and uh, maybe, yeah, maybe the sun was... Yeah, it's, it's in and out behind the clouds, well. isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah I, d I don't mind a goalkeeper punching, as long as it's decisive and he gets good contact. And maybe the maybe the defenders are aware that he's a goalkeeper who likes to punch, so they, feel they can expect that, rather than be thinking, oh, this is a, a comfortable catch for the goalkeeper and then he's going to punch it. But, yeah, toes as long throws, fortunately. 41 and a half minutes into the game that's the first one that we've seen that's the first opportunity that Aldershot Town have offered to Ben Tozer big goal kick both players jump couldn't win it Gandua takes it down he's been dispossessed now but he's battling to win it back and he has won it back against three Forest Green players plays the ball through to Kai Corbett not a lot of room to work in there and quickly Forest Green get nine men behind the ball and they clear it forward only as far as Theo Widrington who finds Frost Frost Looks to go past McCann, then comes back to Widrington. Widrington inside to Barrett. Barrett with a no-look pass to Luke Jenkins. Um, Jenkins down the line to Frost. Frost just can't find any room. And one of the reasons, as we say, when they're out of possession, Forest Green fall into a back five straight away. No messy. So there's no easy gaps for Aldershot to get down the flanks. Now there might be a bit of room. Here's Widrington, tries a ball through the middle, taken by Corbett, tries a shot from distance! just over the bar with his left foot struck it well always going over Steve but a sign of what might be to come from Kai Corbett yeah good move from Aldershot Town as you say back five of Forest Green with Adam May sat in front of those back three as well as an extra shield but Corbett there he turned onto that pass with a bit of impetus 
he was always going to shoot in the end it was always rising over the bar as well but certainly I think he's shown some good signs in this opening oh good header on and Forrest Green are in here clipped towards the goal and it lands on the roof of the net from Kyle McAllister blink and it could be 2 all, but it isn't it remains 2-1 43 minutes gone Steve Gibbs yeah only inches away McAllister is an excellent player he got great left foot trickery can play in a number of positions great quality on the ball but only inches away there that dropped onto the roof of the net could so easily have gone under, underneath the crossbar with Dewhurst stranded yeah as great as the shots have been going forward they do need to be wary of Forest Green's quality going the other way absolutely and we criticised Deutsch for hesitating went through on goal himself but there he brilliantly flicked on the ball and it was anticipated by the little man up alongside him McAllister and Forest Green to be fair have had the chances in this game to have scored as many goals as all shot but as we move into the 45th minute it remains Forest Green uh, still losing by two goals to one here at uh, the EBB Forest Green have got the ball inside their own half half time it's nil nil between Halifax and Barnet and Yeovil and Hartlepool and Dagenham and Wheelstone so three games at least nil nil at half time plenty of other goals we'll run through them after this half's finished and after we've done our half time report into uh, BBC Radio Surrey Frost can't keep the ball in and Aldershot have conceded a corner on the 45 minute mark or it will be in about 10 seconds we'll see how much added time we're going to get um, but Aldershot have got some defending to do and for all their bright early work they're going to need to do this defensive work well otherwise they will go in at half time diminutive uh, board held up I think it said one minute it did a bit very different to the start of last season in comes the corner from Forest Green's past everybody hooked up in the air by who else Hadi Gandor um, plays his part again in this half Forest Green can only head into touch Aldershot have a throw and they should have the nous to keep the ball for the next 35 seconds and go in with a precious half time lead Gateshead 3-0 up now against Ebbsfleet Southend 1-0 up against York at half time and Rochdale 2-0 up at Boston at half time Aldershot take the throw go back to Marcus Dewhurst Jenkins just says hang on to it he'll probably try and run down the clock a little bit until he's shut down and now he's going to kick forward and the referee's not ready to blow his half time whistle yet ball's won in the air by Bunker Widrington battles well for it and the referee just as Gandur is fouled blows for half time leaving Gandur on the floor I hope he's okay seems to be feeling around his shin area and it's half time Aldershot shot down to Forest Green 1 were we going to be entertained this season yes have Aldershot shot down still got goals in them yes are they still a little bit Oh, I'll let Steve find the word at the back yes over, over to you Steve but you may have to back off if they come to me for a half time report not, so a, not a problem yeah normal service has resumed at the Ebb Stadium what a first half Aldershot Town threatening to run away with it in the opening opening 13 minutes then Forest Green reasserted themselves maybe they took a quarter of an hour to get used to being back in the National League I think it was a Aldershot Town hit them with a short sharp shock opening the way they started and the way Hadi Gandor started absolutely on fire briefly Aldershot Town were rampant but then Forest Green's undoubted quality going forward the likes of Deutsch, McCann, McAllister came to the fore and you could say that maybe they should be level that having been 2-0 down they've they've had the quality they've had a couple of fleeting chances that on another day could so easily have gone their way and they could be going into the dressing room thinking well yep. that was a tough start but now we're back on parity all right but well we try and do this in two parts steve because yeah. i've just been told to be on standby for a half time uh, report into rebc radio sorry thank you steve um so two one shots at half time and if you don't know what happened in the first half listen on for the next minute or so
Well, Connor, the questions we had prior to kickoff were can Aldershot still score goals having sold Tollage and Stokes? Would they still be an entertaining watch this season? And would they still be a bit fragile at the back? The answers yes, yes, and yes. What a blistering start for the shots. Hadi Gandur, the centre forward who was so busy in pre season but just couldn't find the net, hit the woodwork two or three times. Uh, Tommy Widrington said they might have to get an exorcist in. <laughs> Well, they must have got him in in the week, Connor, because chance number one, seven minutes, brilliant press from Aldershot. Gandor through, rounded uh, a defender, clipped it in with his right foot, and uh, just six minutes later, he was foraging around the left-hand side of the penalty area. He had two defenders for company, and he just tried an outrageous flick with his right foot, which lobbed the keeper, nestled in the back of the net, and shots found themselves in dreamland, 2-0 up after just 13 minutes five minutes later Josh Barrett hit the foot of the post as well they could have gone 3-0 up um, they've just been brought back to earth slightly by a 21st minute goal from Forest Green one of their centre backs up for a set piece bringing the ball down nicely and hooking it in at the far post since then Kai Corbett's gone close for the shots McAllister's gone close for Forest Green but Connor, we've been really well entertained. We've seen three goals already. And at half time, the shots have got themselves a slender lead. Aldershot Town 2, Forest Green 1. Right, Steve, back to you. Not quite sure where you got to, but uh, just wrapping up that first half for us. Yeah, brilliant entertainment. Normal service has resumed. All sort of town will feel they they do they should and need to go on to seal three points here this afternoon but also never forget be very very wary that forest green in the blink of an eye can turn a deficit into an advantage that with the likes of mccann mcallister and Deutsch, they've got players who undoubtedly have quality mccann and mcallister are two of the players that played in League One for this team. Deutsch has got left Forest Green to go on to bigger and better things and is now back at the new lawn. Still has quality, still has that poacher's instinct in and around the six-yard box. A player who can always find space where other players can't. This is a really good test of Aldershot Town's new look defence. And if they can come through that this afternoon take the three points not a clean sheet but if they can seal the three points here this afternoon that'll be a huge feather in their cap and a huge boon for them going forwards into this season but whether it's going to be 2-1 3-2 5-4 I don't know I don't really care because again we probably said it exactly the same at this time last season at half time in the first home game when all shot town were already, I think three went up against Oxford City. It's going to be entertainment. It's going to be a team that the town can be proud of, and that's that cannot be underestimated. And they're going to give it more than a good go this season. Let's just look at the goal. I don't want to dwell on the negative at all because we talked about two lovely finishes from Hadi Gandal, particularly the second, which. You know, even if Aldershot go on to score a lot of goals, is going to make the final six or whatever are the goals of the season. Let's just have a little look at the uh, the goal that Shots conceded. Um, Forest Green had a set piece up on the right, didn't they? And it was partially cleared, and Harfield could have let it run behind for a corner. He did well to get a foot up and keep it in, and then I think possibly he could have just hooked, <coughs> excuse me, hooked it to touch. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do with his clearance, but it did go straight to a Forest Green player around the edge of the penalty. Maybe he didn't get the purchase on it that he wanted, I don't know. I th yeah, I think not. I think sometimes discretion should be the better part of valour that you can't always try and pass the ball out of defence, particularly in a tight situation like that. Sometimes, and it was over on that far side, sometimes you kick the ball onto the railway line and then apologise afterwards and say, sorry boss, sorry, sorry defenders, 
I'll pass it better later. But yeah, whether a corner, whether a throw in, even allowing for Ben Toza's prodigious throw ins, anything would have been better. And it's it feels harsh to criticise Harfield for one one element in one goal, considering he is so so impeccable in everything else he does. But I think without that, Aldershot Town would not have conceded. But yeah. equally, it was slack defending in the ball that was able to come back over to the far post, was able to bounce, and a centre-back like Innes, this isn't McCann, McAllister, Deutsch, players who've got that goal-scoring instinct, that technical quality. This is a pretty, with the best will in the world, a pretty agricultural, aggressive defender in Innes who was able to hook the ball deftly into the top corner of the net. He should not have been allowed that space. The ball should not have been allowed to come over as far as it did and drop in the penalty area. There should have been someone there at least stopping in his get a clean strike of the ball. So the, there are many elements, many ways in which that goal could have been avoided, but this is all to shut down. Maybe if maybe if they're too solid in defence, you lose the the <laughs> impetus going forward and it's a fine balance. Maybe it'll never be struck. It's and it. maybe we're not bothered if it's struck or not because yeah. the overall effect, the overall product, if you want to call it that, is gloriously chaotic entertainment. Yeah, absolutely. Agree with that. I was going to make a point about Luke Jenkins during commentary, but it was so frantic I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, it, but now's I think your time. It, I think it fits quite nicely into what we're talking about. For me, I've seen a clear difference in two types of defending from two Aldershot centre-backs this season. Christian Maghomer, I think, knows his place, knows his job. He gets up, he's strong, he marks well, he wins it, he heads it, he keeps his game simple. I think one of the reasons that Luke Jenkins has caught Tommy Widrington's eye as a centre-back is because he can and he wants to play football as well. Yeah. Now, there's a balance to be struck there, and he's done nothing wrong in this game, by the way. But what you can see with Jenkins is he wants to do a lot more than just get it and give it. And um, I mentioned in the pre-season commentary last week, he seemed a bit over-enthusiastic to take players on. I think he can do it, and it's, it's lovely to see if you do it at the right time and in the right place. And I just feel watching on a bit concerned at the moment that he... And I guess that's for Tommy to manage, isn't it? It is. You know, clear instruction about when you're in what situation. To be honest, if if we're in possession, Forrest Greener have got all their players pinned back and he wants to have a bit of a run with it, that, there's no problem with that. But it, no. it's when he's picking up in his own final third. Yeah, definitely. And if it, if it loses, Forrest Greener in, that's what concerns me. Because then all the shot down leave themselves open to being picked off and pressed off like Forrest Green were. Yeah, that that's the exact phrase there's a time and there's a place and certainly he needs to be coached in what the manager wants if the manager wants him to take risks then absolutely fine but I think it should be safety first at the back act now ask questions afterwards if you have to put it if there is such a thing as a Rose Ed at the Ebb Stadium if you have to put the ball there then that's absolutely fine. Nobody ever conceded a goal from the ball being bouncing down the high street. But if Tommy wants his defenders to play football and take risks and go, well, we're going we're gonna to give away X number of goals through our ethos every year. And if you're willing to take that and accept that, that's absolutely fine. But for me, as much as I want to see this team playing good football then you've got a there's a time and a place to launch it out of defence and I think Luke certainly needs to learn that I think all three defenders need to learn that maybe as pragmatic as Christian McHomer can be I think the ethos that is instilled into the whole team has to be caveated with don't take chances directly in front of goal alright Steve let's take a very brief break now um, it may be two three four minutes two one shots at half time four o'clock let's all take a deep breath and go again for the second half 
in a few minutes time As Ollie Harfield leads the Aldershot Town team out for the second half. News that uh, Josh Stokes on the opening day of the championship season did really well to make Bristol City's playing squad. He was on the bench today for their one-all draw away at Hull City. He didn't get off that bench but uh, would have been a great experience for him nevertheless. Uh, speaking with his father this week, um, he's done really well. Um, they're not initially talking about sticking him out on loan. That could come, of course, but uh, he's uh, impressed pre-season and he's got himself on the fringes, which is uh, an excellent star. Um, with a little bit of luck, and I'm just going to double-check this. With a little bit of luck, um, Lauren Tolladge will be making his debut for Port Vale today. They are 1-0 up at Salford at half-time and I'm delighted to say that Lauren Tolladge is, did make that first 11. I think you wish these players well, Steve, of course, but you hope that they do actually, they are able to grasp the opportunity that they've got and because there's nothing more frustrating than seeing them go and then not get, not get game time. No, absolutely. It, it, it would be a waste for, for them both to move, both to have moved on deservedly so but to then not get the get the benefits of that move where it's almost they'd have been better to stay here for another another season and then kick on but certainly it's yeah great to see those two and we wish them well they were two of the two of the outstanding players that Aldershot Town have enjoyed in recent years maybe in the last decade that's Steve Gibbs, I'm Rob Warren, this is the BBC Radio Surrey, or watching NLTV. Second half, underway, here at the EBB, Josh Barrett takes it, shots attacking the East Bank end in the second half. No changes from either side's manager at half-time. Forrest Green quickly on the attack, good pressing from Widrington, can't win it cleanly. May keeps possession, sends it back to uh, Jamie Robson, who plays it forward, cut out with a headed winner from Maghoma. And then Jenkins is fouled from behind by the Forest Green. And it is number 11 who has come on, Tom Knowles. Tom Knowles, it come on in, in midfield. Looks like uh, wide left midfield. I didn't hear who has gone off, but could he well, certainly... Could well be Robson then. Yeah, it looks... Have they reverted to a back four? Or Knowles can play wing back. Uh, so he might be a, a direct replacement. Um, For Jamie Robson. Yeah, Normally, he last season with Walsall, which is where he was playing last year, he was converted from a left midfielder into a right wing back. So maybe now that those two positions have dovetailed and he's a left wing back um, here this afternoon. Watch this space. Okay, Cameron Hargreaves intercepts the ball forward but can only feed it to Adam May. May, May plays a ball around the corner and it's being held up now by McAllister. He's having a battle against Ollie Harfield, but Ryan Jones comes across, does his job. Defends. 2-1 the scoreline to shots. I guess you could say at almost any stage in a game of football, but the next one goal could be so crucial in this one. Forest Green score it. They're right back in it. All three results possible. And you'd like to think that if the shots can get one more, it will be enough ultimately to get them across the line today. Throw in taken. Back to long. Clips in a right-footed cross. Headed away well by Jenkins. He got up early and he hung up and won it well. And he's headed it into the path of Tyler Frost. Frost down the line for Corbett. Tries to hold it up. Goes down. Loses it. Tries to win it back. Osadibis won it back. Forrest Green. Ball around the corner. Terrific ball to McAllister. He's in at the edge of the air. He's going to try a shot. Oh, it's gone straight through the legs of Marcus Dewhurst. And just 47 minutes in. Two minutes into the second half. Aldershot's two-goal lead has been wiped out. Aldershot Town 2, Forest Green 2, Steve Gibbs. Yeah, slack again from Aldershot Town. Forest Green were able to build 
a little bit too easily from the back and then McCann was offered uh, McAllister. McAllister sorry was afforded far too much space in that right channel Harfield a little bit standoff then wasn't able to get back into position to recover and make the block and then the ball arrowed straight through Dewhurst's legs into the net both goals disappointing for Aldershot Town this afternoon you say maybe they had one hand on the three points this afternoon now they've got to do it all over again could be worse Aldershot could be 4-0 down at Gateshead like Ebbsfleet are it's 2 all here the goals have been shared it just feels like they're losing when they were 2-0 up and now it's 2 all. but the good news a long way to go and the EBB saw an average of just under four goals a game last season uh, four already two minutes into the second half ball forward kept in by Hadi Gandua plays it back to Josh Barrett Barrett thinks about a cross now spreads it low to Cameron Hargreaves he finds Corbett Corbett back to Luke Jenkins Jenkins out to the right hand side to Frost Aldershot continue to play with a degree of poise and confidence and no evidence in their body language that they've given up a two goal lead here's Josh Barrett oh lovely fake ball to the far post I think it wasn't quite a cross it wasn't quite a shot and it ends up drifting past the far post but applause at the shots uh, by the shots faithful uh, as they're still feeling a little bit uh, sore after seeing that two goal lead wiped out Steve Gibbs 50th minute 2-2 yeah it does feel rather rather flat deflated around here having been 2-0 up having looked so confident so rampant albeit briefly but yeah they've definitely got enough in their armoury to get themselves back in and get themselves back in front it's maybe just compounded fact by Mr Consistent Oli Harfield has maybe made a couple of a couple of mistakes for both goals and that that is almost unheard of it was a very good ball around the corner it was to be fair. it was but then Harfield was in a battle the sort of battle he normally he normally comes out on top of but it was you know you, this is where you have to remember the likes of McAllister have played at League One level um, terrific ball well received nice bit of skill here's Barrett clipping the ball in deflects off a forest green player Cameron Hargreaves might get a chance on the far post no, he sends it further right to Frost Frost comes back looks for an easy ball inside finds that to Widrington Widrington goes back to Frost Frost one touch and then a driven cross in looks like it's going past everybody Sean Long takes no chances and chests it behind for a corner to Aldershot at the East Bank end we're in the 51st minute Aldershot Town 2 Forest Green 2 the shots bursting into a two goal lead on 13 minutes from Hadi Gandor with both goals but Innes and McAllister have got Forest Green back into it and it's all to play for. Josh Barrett to take this corner for the shots at the East Bank end. And it comes to the far post. Jenkins is up. This has come off a Forest Green player, has it? Referee spotted an infringement anyway. Possibly on the goalkeeper. Kai Corbett's limping. I think someone thinks somebody's trodden on his foot, perhaps. But he's OK. Um, and it will be a free kick to Forest Green. Yeah, I think Ward was manoeuvred out of the way as he went to, came to catch that high ball. Deservedly a free kick for Forest Green. Do you know what, though? I've seen so many teams do that kind of thing against Aldershot goalkeepers last season. And, and Aldershot were always very naive. They very rarely tried anything like that. Now, obviously, if you do it and it gets seen, the referee gives a free kick, fair enough. But, you know, in terms of the, the battle and the desire, the will to win, the determination to to try and do a bit better from attacking set pieces I don't mind it no no absolutely I think it's it's worth doing goalkeepers are, are all too easily protected too often by referees they're, they're there to be challenged now Aldershot might well win a throw in down by the corner flag on the right hand side everybody that knows anything about the National League has predicted Barnet to be this season's champions they've certainly spent well they've got quality in depth and they are 1-0 down at Halifax Town <laughs> uh, Cook with the goal here's Gandur playing the ball back to Frost ball's poked into touch again another throw in to Aldershot on the attack Oldham 2-0 up against Braintree I think I gave that score out once before 
throw in then to Frost Barnet have equalised already that might be the sign of potential champions go 1-0 down score straight away referee spots uh, an unintentional handball there from Frost and uh, Forest Green will have a free kick let's I mean there's a long way to go Steve there could well be more goals in this game and the result could go any one of the three ways were it to finish 2-2 is there a case to be made that both managers might be relatively happy with it I, I, I mean I don't I know Tommy Windrington wants to win everything even if it's a game of tiddlywinks against his sons but you know you're recognising the opposition that's in town as well yeah again Harfield can't quite get onto a ball there and uh, oh well done Ryan it, uh, Ryan Jones to win the ball plays it up to Josh Parrott Josh Parrott looking for a ball or he goes safe one in the end to Cameron Hargreaves Frost was almost into a bit of space now he's had to peg himself back Aldershot still got the ball though Dagenham have taken the lead against Wealdstone this is still the game I think with the most goals in it so far in the National League today Altrincham beating Woking 1-0 and Woking have had a man sent off now as well more details to follow here at the EBB Aldershot who finished 8th in the National League last year against Forest Green who finished 24th in the Football League back to back relegations for them here Tyler Frost comes all the way back to Marcus Dewhurst goalkeepers oh his, his ball forward was almost cut out by Charlie McCann but went through to shots clear in the end then Cameron Hargreaves ends up on his derriere and Widrington gives the ball away this time to Adam May and just a little sense a little bit of frustration in the ground because not only has the scoreline gone to all but Aldershot's performance has lost its way a little gone a little bit flat yes. um, and here's a ball well cut out by Ollie Harfield clips the ball down the line it's going to be won easily in the air by Innes exchanges passes with May it's also two all now between Fylde and Solihull Moors so a battle between these two games for the most goals in the National League this afternoon Gateshead 4 Gateshead 4 Ebsfleet Dill also of course has four goals in it and uh, with less than an hour gone in the National League season just two games remain that are goal worth and they are those between Tamworth, who came up, and Sutton, who came down. And Yeovil and Hartlepool, who were both in this... Oh, no, Yeovil, who came up against Hartlepool. Oh, it was Dale Gorman, the former Barnet captain, who signed for Woking, who has been sent off. So Woking up against it there, up at Altrincham. Ball forward from shots. Forest Green go for the pincer movement between Innes and Tozer. An order shot are readying James Henry, the 35-year-old sign from Oxford United, who made his debut for 45 minutes last uh, week here at the EBB. And Tommy Widrington not waiting an overly long time. There's a ball through the middle. Is McAllister offside? It's not given. Back onto his left foot. Squares the ball into May. I beg your pardon. It's slotted away, but surely, Steve, there's an offside. It's not been given. Forest Green have taken the lead. We were level with it, Steve. It looked like a clear offside to me. It hasn't been given. And shots have gone from 2-0 up to 3-2 down. 57 minutes gone. Yeah. It did look suspiciously offside. Clearly, you'd hope that the referee's assistant had the best view of all. But once again, all the shot town. Sucker punched on a counter-attack. Excellent play from Forest Green. And you've got you've got those players that have got that quality that that know their way around higher leagues than this. And when you've got someone like Christian Deutsch up alongside you, you lay the ball off and he does the rest. From 2-0 down, from feeling like it could be a chastening reintroduction to the National League. Forest Green are now 3-2 up Tommy Widrington responds immediately and it is James Henry on Kai Corbett who makes way shots have it all to do 
So, so disappointing for Shots, who roared into life at the start of this game with two goals in the opening 13 minutes. Can they get back on terms quickly? Here's Barrett looking to exchange passes with Jones, giving the ball away, and now they're all at odds with each other. And uh, really, Aldershot learning an expensive lesson here, but it's not over yet. We've had our five goals at the EBB. There's five at Gateshead as well. They're 5-0 up against Ebbsfleet. But uh, from fantastic start. Now, this time the assistant referee puts his flag up for Deutsch being offside. But I feel pretty certain he's missed an offside there for the Forest Green third goal. It matters not, though. It's not going to be chalked off. And Aldershot have got to do something about it. Tommy Whittington's made a swift move to uh, send on James Henry. Not in the scenario that he would have liked. And uh, there's a stunned silence here at the EBB. But here's Josh Barrett coming forward. Plays the ball into Henry. Henry finds Cameron Hargreaves. Hargreaves switches direction, goes back to Theo Widrington. Widrington to Harfield. Harfield to Jones. Harfield with the overlap. Can he get his cross in? He can. Oh, Gandor jumps and misses it. And then a follow-up volley from Tyler Frost. He's leaning back and he skies it somewhere between the crossbar at the East Bank end and the roof. And uh, that's disappointing because Aldershot, who have been um, really clinical with the previous chances they've had, two in the net, one against the post. Um, the first bad miss, really, from the shot. You'd have felt that Frost would have had the composure to at least hit the target. You would. You would hope so. He's got he's got more quality on the ball than that showed. Should really have kept it down. He was leaning back. Maybe his knee wasn't over the ball, but yeah. Should have definitely done better than that. Got it on target. Aldershot giving the ball away, but won it back again quickly through... Widrington. Widrington's fouled from behind by Osadibi. And uh, we'll shot have a free kick just inside the Forest Green half. We've just hit the hour mark, listeners. So don't be too discouraged, Shots fans. 30 minutes to go, uh, plus whatever's added. There was only a minute added in the first half. How contrasting is that to last season, where I think it was about 10 at half time and another seven. 12 and 7 I think if I remember right ball out to the right kept down nicely by Frost Cross comes in punched in the air by Forrest Green under pressure from his own centre back the defender uh, the goalkeeper he's just uh, loosening his arm off as a ball through the middle Jenkins takes no chances and puts it into touch you might have just found Maghoma with possession but takes no chances so, so disappointing that shots have conceded three again, particularly after um, bursting into a 2-0 lead. I think maybe they showed their naivety there, pushing on hard for a third goal, trying to get the game won. Others would say, well, attack is the best form of defence. Here's Forrest Green getting in down the left-hand side, um, holding it up. Frost persists, couldn't win it at the first attempt, wins it at the second. Now he plays it down the line, a little bit of a deflection, flicked on by Henry. Taken down on the chest of Gandur, lost it, uh, picked up by Osadibi. He's won an awful lot of uh, loose balls and, and possession back for Forest Green. If the result were to stay like this, you you know people not here might say, "Oh, Forest Green, they're a they're a good bet for promotion this season." If I'm honest, they've they've looked all right, and you can see they'll have goals in them, but they've looked quite vulnerable at the back as well. Um, here's a ball straight through the middle might go all the way through to Long he's up against the defensive line plays a ball early inside to McCann McCann with the ball in half cleared by Luke Jenkins Adam May heads it backwards Innes is quite big quite big for a uh, sorry quite fast for a big unit as he is Osadibi holds the ball up Tries to turn to go past Ryan Jones and does. Now he's up against Harfield and he goes past them both and then sends the ball into the far post and that one's a bit too strong and it disappears behind the goal at the East Bank end. It might even have stayed in play until it found the touch. It's a throw-in, two shots. There are a few men in that uh, 
Forest Green team, aren't they? You can see they're going to be a, a big threat. team. They're a big Set team, pieces. and goals were their problem last season. They were the lowest scorers in League Two by some margin. I think they averaged less than a goal a game. Yes, they also conceded a lot as well, but if they can remedy that goal scoring problem and they seem to have a bit of a, a formula for it this afternoon then that could be the basis for a good season they're into the penalty area again oh shot is just hooked wide I think it's McCann but uh, terrific effort from Forrest Green and all the shot not just have they been pegged back from 2-0 up to 3-2 down but uh, they look weary at the minute they look a little bit lost out there and uh, they're going to need some more reinforcements and the next one's going to be in the shape of Jack Barham who Tommy Weirdman was so delighted was even able to play a part in pre-season coming on for um, towards the end of the game last Saturday and uh, he's going to come on earlier in this one 27 minutes to go and uh, it'll be interesting to see who comes off there here's James Henry finding Cameron Hargreaves He's busy. He goes back to Maghoma. Maghoma out to Harfield. Can Harfield find a moment? One of his many, many assists. We call him Mr. 8 out of 10. He's been given the captain's armband today. And he'll be the first to admit he's not at his best of games this afternoon. Um, certainly um, with the first and second goals, which were not entirely down to him, but maybe maybe at his very high standards he could have done better Hargreaves blocks the ball into touch Forest Green have got themselves a throw and uh, well who's going to roll the dice next Aldershot Town are ah, and Josh Barrett's afternoon is done he's given uh, 65 minutes and I hate to say this Steve but I've had memories evoked of a game from last season it's the one where Bromley went 2-0 up against Aldershot and then hit the foot of the post and Aldershot won it 3-2. It's exactly what's happened here yeah. other, than, other than the fact that Bromley got their two goals in the first three minutes. Yeah, it has. It has, absolutely. And I think, at, yeah, at the moment it's it's credit to Forest Green that they've not allowed that initial setback, those initial setbacks to knock them all out of their stride and at the moment they're, they've come strong but... All shot down. They've gone flat. They've lost a bit of quality. They've lost a bit of impetus. They've lost a bit of edge. And hopefully Jack Barham is the man to come on and bring it back. But at the moment, All shot down need to rediscover the quality that they had in the first half because at the moment it's nowhere to be seen. Good exchange between Barham, Jones, and Henry. Jo Barham's trying to scamper onto it now and pull the ball back. Oh, it's just gone. What's he given there? Offside, a very late offside against Jack Barham. Well, it didn't take him long to get his first offside <laughs> of, the Steve, no. uh, of, of the Stephen season. Of the Stephen season, Se yeah. Steve season gives. I think even though he had quite a lot of time out injured, unfortunately, Jack, he was still top of one league in the National League last season. The most offsides by a player. Of course, he will say he only needs to get one marginal decision in his favour and he's through on goal and will score but yeah I'm sure Jack will want to want to not be top of that league come uh, the end of this season Maghoma clears the ball up in the air Jones wins the next one then there's a coming together off the ball Theo Widdington goes down and the referee wants none of it now the referee has to allow attention for Widrington because of because he's holding his head but I don't think the referee thought anything had happened there he's going to have a he's got the ball is he going to have a word with the assistant referee Widrington of course all way, already on a yellow card by the way and I think he's annoyed now the referee with uh, Theo Widrington because he said he doesn't need any treatment and uh He's treading a fine line with uh, Theo Widdington. He, he got given yellow when it could have been red. The referee now 100% believes that he's just simulated injury there where it wasn't given. Um, and I tell you what, he doesn't want to put a badly timed tackle in in the no. remaining 23 minutes. No, and I think um, his dad as well needs to, needs to be wary. I think uh, Mr Simpson is well aware of, of Tommy 
and what Tommy's been saying to him in the last uh, minute or so. I think any more any more lip from the Aldershot Town bench and there will be a yellow card. Here's Widrington coming forward. A little back heel into the path of James Henry. Henry carrying it forward, getting to the edge of the area now, spreads it out to the left to Ryan Jones. Jones with the ball in to the feet. 27 shot. Oh, it's a shot from Henry. He got a deflection on it. It still went agonisingly close to the Forest Green goal and it ended up behind the goal for a corner to shots but James Henry Steve going close there yeah there was a few <laughs> a few shots fans in front of us in the North Stand were already up cheering that one it seemed to take an age as it drifted ricocheted a couple of times drifted just past the far post but a corner is not a bad second prize Ryan Jones with the corner left footed very deep to the far post over everybody but Widrington's still there He's in the penalty area now, twists and turns onto his left foot, then his right, and then tries a trick that clearly he thought he'd got in the locker. Degree of difficulty was quite high on that one, Steve. It was, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Theo nearly tripped himself up uh, there. But, uh, yeah, nice try and good positioning as well. To He was the only player to anticipate that the ball might drop to him. Here's Henry bursting through the middle, plays the ball out to the left to Harfield. Can he make room for a cross? He goes short to... Theo Widrington, the sun's bursting through the clouds here for oh is Mac Homer going to try a shot from distance well I think I might be kind if I call it a shot it's in Chucky Arabin territory on top of the East Bank roof uh, and it'll be a goal kick to Forest Green we're yeah. in the 70th minute and the um, crowd has just been announced 2,564 with 241 away supporters a healthy crowd for the start of the season Steve and they've been well entertained um, but the shots trail 3-2 having led 2-0 yeah and I think Christian would be be better advised taking another option there you can never blame somebody when it opens up for you thinking I'm going to have a shot here but in the end that was uh, that was not a good effort it was definitely was a shot unfortunately but one that was always high wide drifting away and I think he should have been better off passing it to a teammate continuing to build rather than going for glory Liam Serkin the uh, Forest Green number 10 one or two players you were surprised weren't in the starting line the other one being Tom Knowles they're both on now Serkin has come on for Manny Osadibi um, I'm not sure if Forrest Green had another substitute waiting to come on or not no just the one at yeah. the moment and that'll be a straight swap in central midfield Osadibi is the player with the energy with the physicality and Circum maybe his legs aren't quite as mobile as they once were but he still brings lots of energy that box to box impetus to the central midfield ok Jack Barham calls to his teammates come on double fist pump what have they got left, Aldershot? Flick on from Forest Green. Theo Winderton wins the ball, turns it around the corner, but he's played it straight to the Forest Green number 11. Knowles, is he going to try a little clip ball into the area? He is. It doesn't come off. Theo Winderton thought he'd won it, but a bit of clever play in the midfield for Forest Green, and they've still got it out to this right-hand side to Long. They've grown into this game the longer it's gone. Um, here they lose the ball again. Winderton feeds James Henry. Henry with the ball straight through the middle looking for Barham. Barham can't get onto it. Bunker can. And uh, Innes, I beg your pardon. And Forest Green clear. Forest Green clear to touch. Yeah, it was Bunker who went off in that half time sub. Yeah, Robson moved into centre back. And Knowles took Robson's place as left, left sided wing back. That's it. Halffield coming forward just in front of Steve and I in the media box. Plays the ball into the feet of Hadi Gando. Takes it nicely to the edge of the area pulls it back to Jack Barham he can't quite get his shot away finds Cameron Hargreaves can he get a shot away no he spreads it further right to Tyler Frost who goes for the return pass and gets it all wrong he's cut out by Knowles and played forward and that's one of those frustrating moments where he all shot just slightly overplayed there were two or three opportunities to get a shot away and uh, each time a player elected to try another pass here's Mac Homer feeding Harfield plays the ball inside looking for Gandor can't find him bounces off Tozer and nicely into the path of another player and 
it's Forest Green who've been able to call upon replacements that have played in the League One and League Two. And the shots looking a little bit ragged, a little bit tired. They put a lot of energy into the first half. Can they stay in this one? Can they take it late? Can they get themselves something out of it? Shots to Forest Green three. We've had almost every box ticked in terms of things that happened last season. Uh, there were seven goals in the opening game last year, of course. Shots beat Oxford City 5-2 and then went and lost 5-1 up at Oldham. Maghoma, ball through the middle to Henry. Henry touches it to Barham. Barham spreads it out to the right-hand side to Frost. Frost up against Knowles. What's he going to do? Can he spread it in? He can. It's cleared away. Comes back to him. Picks it up in the area. Drags it across. Cut out behind. Another throw. I beg your pardon. Another corner to the shots. 73 and a half minutes gone. We're buckled up, Tommy. But the ride's on a slight downhill at the minute. Can it climb again? Can it climb again this afternoon after tremendous momentum in the first half? 2-1 lead, wiped out just after half-time. Now it's 3-2 Forest Green. Cross comes in. Jenkins jumps. I thought the header might have come off Jenkins, but uh, clearly in the body language of the referee, it was a Forest Green player. Dagenham Redbridge one, Wealdstone one. A big hello to Baz, Jill and Alfie. They're listening to the shots on holiday in Greece. Have a good time, guys. Get back safe. Corner comes into the far post, headed up by a Forest Green player. He's hit with a hard challenge at the same time. Not sure if it was Gandor or Jenkins, but uh, referee spotted it, as did I, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't surprised when he blew his whistle. No, I thought he might have uh, let play continue, Mr Simpson, but uh, no, I think the East Bank is suggesting that the referee doesn't know what he's doing, but unfortunately he does and I think he was right to give that free kick it was late given but nonetheless there was a foul goal kick then free kick goal kick whatever you want to call it Jed Ward takes flicked on and all the way through to Marcus Dewhurst mixed debut for Ward he um, conceded twice in the opening quarter of an hour but he hasn't conceded since and his team have, have got uh, back on the rails and they now lead by three goals to two shots pressing but Forest Green making themselves hard to break down now Harfield and Widrington little run from Henry Henry gives it back to Widrington and then he falls and Forest Green have got an attack now three on threes limping a bit as well trying to ball straight through the middle Deutsch oh heavy touch and all the shot town get away with that Theo Widrington booked when it could have been red. Limping now as well. Looks Surely like Tommy has to take his, yeah. his son off. He's, it looks like won. a bit of cramp, but still. But for whatever reason, and there's plenty of them, he's played his part in this game. There's a ball through the middle, well watched by Jenkins. He touches it back to Dewhurst. And uh, Aldershot come forward again. Harfield and Jones looking for a bit of movement ahead of him can't see a lot goes back to Harfield Harfield squares it to Hargreaves Hargreaves finds James Henry who looks very adept at finding little pockets of space he tries a clip ball into the area that's chested back to his keeper by the big number five Ryan Innes who got Forest Green's season up and running in the 21st minute with that first goal and the forward shot had been a little bit more robust it might have proved to be a consolation but it hasn't it was uh, the beginning of the comeback for Forest Green which McAllister completed in the 57th minute here's Ryan Jones winning the ball stumbling a bit over it plays it down the line for Hadi Gandor he's one on one against Ben Toza he's running across and into the penalty area now drops it back into the feet of Theo Widrington Widrington gives it back to Gandor edge of the area can he try a shot it's a good curler it's just over the bar I didn't get too excited in the commentary Steve because we could always see it was going over it was never far over but uh, it remains two chances taken out of three for Hadi Gandor this afternoon yeah I think he did really well to be part of that move two or three times but you could always see what he was trying to do but 
the shot was never executed as well as it needed to be and yet it wasn't a mile away but it was never going in Dagenham and Redbridge 2 Wheelstone 1 I know Josh Reese, the X shot has been on the score sheet today but our first hat trick by the way in the National League of the season today Greg Ollie has got three of those five goals for Gateshead against Ebbs Fleet here it's all shot town two Forest Green three we're in the seven or oh, 78 minutes just gone now Mag Homer finds Harfield Harfield in a tight spot just plays it off of McAllister elsewhere in the National League file two Solihull Moors two Altrincham one Woking Neil Woking down to 10 men as well Boston Neil Rochdale two Dagenham two Wealdstone one Halifax two Barnet one now We've just nine minutes to go in that one. Adatoro has got that goal. Gateshead 5, Ebbsfleet nil. Maidenhead nil. Eastley 2, Oldham 3, Braintree nil. Southend 1, York nil. Um, and uh, all the shot of giving the ball away in attack again. Hargreaves does well to retrieve the situation. Tamworth nil, Sutton nil. Yeovil nil, Hartlepool 1. And uh, all the shot have the ball with Luke Jenkins just inside his own half. Feeds Mag Homer, who finds Cameron Hargreaves. And uh, Forrest Green, who struggled to score goals last season. And conceded too early on today. As he got a lovely ball around the corner. Gander into the left hand edge of the penalty, pulls it back. Henry! James Henry on his debut. Levels for the shot in the 80th minute. 3 3, 10 minutes to go. And the new season is back here at the EBB. All to shot town three, Forest Green three, Steve Gibbs. What a lovely finish from James, Hen James Henry, a player who's always had that happy knack of arriving at the right time, the right place, just ghosting into the area. And he raced onto that one as the cross was pulled back. Finish, side foot, but lashed it past Ward into the net. Suddenly the ebb has its verve back. It believes again. 3-3, three, three. where the game goes from here, who knows. But All Shot Town, they needed to lift it. It looked like maybe Forest, Green, Forest Green's experience and know-how was going to win the day. But then the experience of James Henry has told and the shots are right back into it. The game hasn't restarted yet. Theo Widrington is down inside the, uh, inside the centre circle and it looks like he's not going to be able to continue. He's been pulled back onto his feet by Jack Barham and is now applauding all four corners of the ground as he makes his way off uh, I think whichever way you look at it Steve it's a good decision Absolutely. to protect any injury or not that he's got because he's given his all for the team because he's on a yellow card and he actually shakes the referee's hand which is definitely the way I want to see his game finishing this afternoon because I was really concerned that he might see red this afternoon yeah and when you've got someone like the quality the guile the calmness of Dayan Tetek to come on it's an absolute no-brainer Theo is prone to red mist he's prone to little gaffes whereas Tetek is a calm head he's played at a higher level and he does increase the experience in this order shot team which I think up against Forest Green all shot town need it they need another wise head Jones and Harfield both jump for the same ball there Jones makes contact heads it into touch and uh, well we've had six goals the average from last season was just under four starts with a six today. we weren't even trying last season sorry we weren't even trying last they season clearly there's something wrong wasn't there Ray Anstey says get in he's listening from Cancun in Mexico Forest Green are going to make another substitution. They are going to bring on the number 14, Tyroy, Tyrese Omatoy. And they're taking off Christian George. Jo Doidge, I beg your pardon. Just don't know what to make of it. But we've been well entertained. We've seen six goals. And thankfully, Aldershot have got three of them. Can all the shot complete their own comeback in these final 10 minutes or so? I wouldn't put anything past them. As, as we've said before, 
all three results are still possible. And there's a second uh, substitute there. I think Adam May has gone off and Teddy Jenks has come on. That's a like-for-like -like swap in central midfield. Well spotted, Steve. Water shot have won it. Henry goes back to Harfield, plays it up to Barham. Chests it down but can't keep it under control. Two seasons ago, Aldershot Town played one of the title favourites, Wrexham, here. It was 3 all on 90 minutes and they lost 4-3. <laughs> Last season, Aldershot played the title favourites and winners, Chesterfield, here. And it was 3 all late on and they lost it 4-3. Can they... What are you suggesting? Can they rewrite the script this year? Can they go on in these last seven minutes and find a winner? Why not? We bigged up and built Absolutely. up Hadi Gandor and he delivered. Here's Henry winning the ball back. Gives it back to Gandor. Gandor back to Tetek. Tetek leaves the ball for Harfield. Um, and uh, Harfield continues down the left side. Comes back to Tetek. Sorry, something going on with the stewards there. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, we continue. Um, small. Oh, order shot through Henry. Try to play it to Frost on the right wing, and it just zips across him. It's into touch. Tommy always says we want to win every game. They certainly set out to win this game. They had a good lead. They lost it. They've gone behind. He also says if you can't win a game, we try and make sure we don't lose it. And that's what order shot have done to this point. Offside, given against Forest Green. And uh, only happens at certain times, Steve, doesn't it? But the cry from the East Bank has rallied right around the, right down the yeah. north stand um, as the shots are back in it. Here's Harfield from deep finding Gandor, one-on-one -on -one against Innes. Goes past him like he's not there, comes back onto his right foot, plays it back now to Tetek. Can Tetek engineer something for Ryan Jones or can Jones get the ball into the box? He's backheeled it into the path of Tetek. Tetek squares it to Henry. Henry tries a ball to the far post, gets it wrong, gives it to a Forest Green player. Forest Green spread it out to the left side. Is that going to find touch? Let Jenkins is in a strong foot race and does. Oh no, he doesn't make contact and it's been picked up by the substitute striker who shoots and it's saved by the feet of Dewhurst, spinning viciously. Has it gone out of play? No, it's kept in. Forest Green have got it again inside the penalty area, clipped in and Dewhurst has got it. And there, Steve, is a perfect cameo of what I'm trying to say about Luke Jenkins. He's tremendous pace, got there. He had to do one, shepherd the ball out if it had enough pace, two, smash it into touch. He did neither. The Forest Green player clipped it up and very nearly scored the winner. Yeah, it was Omato, he's just come on. Maybe it's a blessing for Aldershot Town that he's not quite up to speed of the game yet. But yeah, Jenkins was trying to shepherd the ball out of play. I think slipped, partly was ushered down by Omato's physical presence. But he shouldn't have allowed the Forest Green substitute to, to win the ball in that position. But in the end, the angle was tight. And in the end, Dewhurst was able to make the save. And eventually Aldershot Town scrambled it clear but both sides you would say living dangerously and maybe willing to risk conceding a fourth goal in pursuit of a winner of their own absolutely and that is modern day National League football so few sides go for the draw Jones does well to win it in the air finds Barham he's scampering down the left side tries a cross come shot it's plucked out of the um, it's plucked out of the uh, air by the Forest Green keeper. This time Jenkins gets there and does the right thing. Gets his foot on it, turns, comes forward. Can he find a shots player now with the ball? Clips it up towards Henry. Exchanges passes with Jenkins. All shot doing well in a tight spot. Frost, ball down the line. Headed clear by a Forest Green player, the number 21. All Barham's in and won it back. Found Hargreaves. Hargreaves spreads it out to Tetek. Tetek's got Harfield to the left of him. Harfield's got Jones to the left of him. Jones now going one-on-one -on -one up against his man. Tries to work the angle. Harfield, Maghoma. Maghoma into the area to Ryan Jones. Gets the ball stuck under his feet, but he's won it back again. He's that quick. Yeah. Back to Harfield. Harfield gets it back from Jones. The cross comes in. Hooked away and up in the air by Forrest Green. Behind for a corner. 
Where are we? We're at the EBB on the first day of the season. We've had a roller coaster game. It's three all. We're in the 88th minute. The East Bank and the North Stand are lively. It's the Forest Green fans' turn to, to watch and wonder as Aldershot have this corner to be taken by James Henry. In it comes to the far post and it's poor. It's over everybody and sorry Steve, but I expect better quality from a player that's just come down from League One. Yeah, no, I think so. I think also you'd say that, I'm not sure if it was Lee Jenkins or somebody else, but they initially started further out to the far post and then at the last second came in. So I think maybe those two little mistakes made Henry's delivery look even worse than it was but absolutely the bottom line is that was too deep well thankfully James Henry showed his league one class <laughs> as, he, as, he, as he strode on to Gandua's cross to make it three also we'll forgive him here's McAllister playing the ball through the middle and Mag Homer and Hargreaves just momentarily hesitated McAllister was almost in again but uh, in fact it wasn't McAllister but uh, Forest Green were almost in again. And uh, now Aldershot come away with the ball. It was Liam Serkin foraging forward. Across the back line, through Dewhurst to Jenkins, tries the long diagonal, looking for Barham. Can he get there and keep it in? I doubt it. No, he can't quite get there. And the ball disappears behind the goal. Jack, get it. Give it back to the keeper, otherwise he's going to waste time. No, Jack's run away. That's rather silly. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it's Ward is still perfectly uh, able to waste time whether Jack gives him the ball or not. But at least shows that Aldershot Town want to speed up this game and, and want to win it. And the sponsors man of the match has been, I think, probably deservedly, understandably, been given to Hadi Gandor, who started this glorious afternoon and may yet finish it. Who knows? Here's Jones, might get in on the left side, squares it. Henry beats one, squares it, shoots. Oh! Saved low to his right by Jed Ward. Huge opportunity there for the shots. They've got another corner. They want to take it short. The Forest Green players encroaching. Another chance for the shots to wrap it all up in the 90th minute. We're going to have plus five. Good save there from Ward. It was. And it, was, uh, it wasn't particularly dropped. moving fast, but it was into the bottom corner. And I think he had to change direction to make the save. Ryan Jones is going to take this corner. It's going to be a left-footed out swinger. The referee's just having a word at the moment with Mag Homer and uh, Omatoy. In comes the corner from Jones. It's headed away by Innes, I think the biggest of the Forest Green centre-backs only as far as Hargreaves who finds Henry Henry clips a ball in with his left foot let's head it up in the air Tetex favourite to get there first finds Ryan Jones but Jones can't quite get the contact he wants plays it forward Ollie Harfield onto it wins it clips it forward he can only find Circum ball straight through the middle but Dewhurst's there plays it down the left side oh Innes just pushes Gandor out of the way to win his header but it was such a gentle nudge just beautifully timed his circum um, foot in from Tetek winning the ball Jones quick feet Tetek spreads it inside Cameron Hargraves pushing onto it edge of the area squares it out to Frost Frost has to check he's onto it now right side of the penalty area sends it across it's hooked away by the number 10 only as far as Henry who heads it back to Frost Frost plays it off of Knowles into touch Tommy Widrington's trying to look at the board to see how much time's gone. Well, there's almost three and a half minutes left, Tommy. Shots three, Forest Green three. We've been royally entertained as ever here at the EBB. Shots 2-0 up, then 3-2 down. Got level three all. And now Forest Green play a ball straight through the middle, but Jenkins is on to that and quickly plays it back to Dewhurst, who's already stood well outside of his area. Rochdale have gone 3-0 up at Boston. We'll wrap up all the National League scores after. There's a good turn from Barham. Can try a shot from distance and he's curled it wide. And uh, an opportunity there. You just wish that Barham could have played more of a part in pre-season because unfortunately we're having to see his rustiness in front of the goal. 
um, in the competitive season. But again, Steve, five added minutes went up. Since then, it's Aldershot who've created two chances. They created one right on the 90 minutes as well. Can they find that vital moment? Or can they at least make sure they get the point this time? Yeah, don't throw it away. But also, maybe do you stick, do you twist? It looks like Aldershot Town are pushing for the winner. If, if, both, if either of these sides wants to win, it's definitely Aldershot Town. I think maybe Steve Cottrell and his Forest Green have thought, well, we've battled back for a point. Let's take that back along the a a M4 at least. As a ball headed down by Forest Green defender. Not the best back pass. Beautifully controlled by Toza. Clips it forward. Bag Homer wins the header. Gandor, I don't think, will get onto it. It's a heavy touch from Innes. And then he sprays the ball out to the left where Forest Green have got an extra man. Um, Barham can't quite get on the ball. Picked up by Omatoy. McAllister's got it. He's going to try a shot from distance. That's blocked. Clear it. Jenkins, he does. Only finds Henry. It's three against four, but Henry coming forward with the ball. Tries the ball forward. Is he being impeded as he does so? Referee having none of it. And uh, the Forest Green goalkeeper's got it. Colin Hayden in Tenerife says, many thanks Rob and Steve for your commentary. Looks like it's going to be another fun season. Forest Green through again. No offside given. Circum shoots. Parried away. Cleared away by Tetek. In the 94th minute. Big chance for Circum. Forest Green's third. Ashaw was offside. Nothing given. Here's an advantage played to Tetek. Free kick given to Aldershot in the end. Steve, it looks as though it's going to end level. But the assistant referee has missed a clear offside for the goal. And had Dewhurst not saved that, we'd have been talking about two controversial goals for Forest Green. And thank goodness from an Aldershot Town point of view that that one didn't go in. Yeah, absolutely. It seemed like Serkin was going to just walk it in. He had the freedom of the Aldershot Town penalty area he was getting as close as he needed able to pick his spot unfortunately he got it all wrong and fired it straight at Dewhurst he made a strong parry and now 10 seconds left Ryan Jones has a free kick in the attacking third could they and it comes from Ryan Jones it's over everybody and they kept it in have they yes pulled it back Gandor oh he thinks about bringing it down and trying an overhead kick he's got to the ball first he's held it up against his man the final whistle's gone and it's ended 3-3 and Steve I don't know what to make of it half of me feels gutted the other half feels that it's a thoroughly well deserved point for the shots and the entertainment has arrived back in North East Hampshire for the season ahead yeah what a game absolute everything that you could want goals impetus quality tackles controversy yeah the old shot town roller coaster ride is back for another season i think in the end i wouldn't be surprised if towards the end of the season old shot town look back on this result and think that was a good point because i think forest green yes they've got their own problems to deal with but i think they will do well in this division Tommy Widrington smile on his face but seemed to be making his views clear to the referee on the pitch but yeah what a 90 minutes something that had everything a point apiece I think is a good result for both sides all shot down having been 2-0 up inside 15 minutes will feel that maybe it's two points dropped but also you've got to take into account the quality of Forest Green the experience that they've got they could maybe should have lost it in the closing stages Liam Serkham trying to walk the ball into the net only to fire straight down the throat of Marcus Dewhurst yeah could have lost should have won point of piece is about fair but if you thought about coming this afternoon and didn't get yourself down to Dev Stadium it's money well spent Whew. wow what a breath <laughs> you don't need my words just one oh, sums it all up that's all you need to know yeah Neil Hocking listening abroad as well 
he messaged in to say, come on, you mighty shots. I'm absolutely exhausted, listeners. I'm sure you are listening as well. Uh, it would have been a travesty for me if Aldershot Town had got nothing out of that game. In the end, they take a point. Um, and uh, it'll always be a point. It doesn't matter even if the if the video evidence shows that that third Forest Green goal was offside, as I, I firmly believe it was. I'm going to go at least 80% in my head certain that that was offside and as probably was the opportunity afforded to Liam Serkham uh, late on as well in the 95th minute Aldershot had had chances in the 90th and the 92nd and the 93rd but uh, it wasn't to be in terms of a winner but if there is a difference to last season against that big favourite of a club three all going into added time Shot's got themselves a point this time Steve yeah, absolutely. As you pointed out, Chesterfield, Wrexham, it was late heartbreak having stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the big guns in this division. But, yeah, all shut down. Both teams were still going for the winner in the closing stages, but a hard one point and maybe a little bit deflating in the immediate aftermath. But I think we'll see how strong Forest Green are going to be in this season. And I think they've got enough quality that they're going to not be too far away. Coming to the Ebb Stadium is a stern test for any team. Whatever result you come away with, All Shot Town are not going to give you three points. They're not going to roll over. And Forest Green have had to fight for 95, 96 minutes and fight really hard and use all the quality and experience that they've got to come away with just a point. And they will probably leave here back down the M4 this afternoon thinking yeah we've done well here thank you Steve Gibbs uh, Gina Ballston said happy new season Ellie and I are watching and listening uh, up in uh, Yorkshire sunny Yorkshire <coughs> and Bobby Blair's been listening as well amazing point one according to Bobby let's just have a look at the other scores in the National League today if you're a lover and a believer in league tables after one game of the season all shot a tenth they're top of all the teams with one point due to the nature of having scored three goals Barnet who everybody I know has predicted to win the title lost 2-1 to Halifax of whom nobody I know predicted to be in even a playoff position so <coughs> excuse me voice is nearly gone got to get it uh, oiled up and ready for the new season filed three Solihull Moors 2 Josh Labadee sent off in that one um, that's a bit of a surprising result Altrincham 1 Woking 0 in the end um, one thing I hadn't noticed that Altrincham early on went down to 10 men and then took the lead through Tyler Golden on his debut and then uh, Altr uh, Woking had a player sent off later in that game as well Rochdale won 3 0 at Boston uh, Ian Henderson with a goal there and Devante Rodney with 2 Dagenham Redbridge 2, Wealdstone 1, Josh Reese and Don Piera with the goals there. Uh, Halifax 2, Barnet 1, it was Adetoro who got the winner for Halifax. Gateshead 5, Ebsley 1, Dominic Polian with a late consolation. Um, Whelan Oseni, the new number 9 for Gateshead and Greg Ollie with a hat-trick in that one. Maidenhead nil, Eastley 2. Uh, Will de Havilland own goal and Vokins for Eastley. That one's still in progress. 90 plus 14. Uh, Oldham 3, Braintree 0. Goals for Uchegbalum, Charlesy and uh, Mike Fondop. Southend 1, York City 1. I believe that was the first game live on TV on DAZN or DAZN. Um, Gus Scott Morris for Southend. Uh, Linnell John Lewis with a late goal for York. Where have I read that one before? Uh, Tamworth 1, Sutton United 1, a late goal from Coley in the 91st minute, getting Sutton a point in their first game back in the National League. And finally, Yeovil 0, Hartlepool 1, Jack Hunter goal on 65 minutes. That completes the uh, National League action for this afternoon. Um, just about it from us. My final report to BBC Surrey Radio will be sent into them because they're still talking about uh, Brighton, thank you very much, Steve. Take it you're not making the journey up to Halifax. 
That's OK. Luke Walsh of the Luke Walsh Football Podcast and also a Halifax fan who joined me last season for that game is going to join me again, listeners, in seven days' time. And then just early notice that yours truly has a holiday coming up. But as far as I know, at least two, if not all three of the games that I'm sadly going to miss will be covered by BBC Surrey. And if they're not, it'll be because there is another BBC radio station covering it. So fear not, listeners. Hopefully you found the uh, link today nice and early. If you didn't, the links that are floating around on social media, save that link because I think that'll be the one to go to week in, week out. Thank you very much for joining us around the country and around the world. It's been a breathless afternoon at the EBB. The shots went 2-0 up and then 3-2 down but got themselves level thanks to James Henry on debut. And that's how it ends, 3 all. The shot's 10th in the early National League table. And we'll go again in seven days' time up at the Shea Ground. Shots, three. Forest Green, three. Cheerio all.